Hello kindergarten, it is Mrs. Shivani from the Syracuse Academy of Science and Citizenship. How are you guys today? I hope you had a good night's sleep and you ate a good breakfast or lunch or dinner, whatever time you're watching this, and you are ready to learn with me because I am ready to teach you. So today we'll have our five steps of math, just like we always do. We'll start off with our fluency, our warming up. We will um, do our application problem. Then we'll get into the meat of our lesson, the concept development. We'll talk about what we learned, that's step four. <laughs> and then you will get to do your exit ticket and your Google Forms for um, review of what you learned for kind of like a test at the end. <laughs> We're kindergartners now, so we have to take tests all. All right, so today, if you want to do exactly what I'm doing um, next, to whatever device you're watching on, you will need your hand, something to count with, doesn't matter what it is, um, beans, Cheerios, um, little erasers, Legos, whatever you want. You will need something to draw with or write with and paper or scrap paper, cardboard, anything that your parents say it's okay to write on, or whiteboard, anything. So today, our objective, that means what do we want to learn today? Today we want to learn how to classify, to find two objects that share a visual pattern, a color, or a use. So something like a purpose. So we're sorting today. We're basically sorting and putting objects together, finding matches for things. And this is so important because learning to make sense of the world and to classify things and sort things is a really important early math skill that will help you guys as we do more difficult math in kindergarten and will help you in first grade and second grade. So this is a really, really fundamental skill to learn. All right, let's get started with some warming up first. Ooh, all right, here we go. So get your objects that you're counting with get out your hand you're probably if you're right-handed that means if you mainly do things with your right hand you'll want to use your left hand as your um hand for sort or for counting with and if you're left-handed like you do things with your left hand you'll probably want to use your right hand for your um to put the things that you're counting with on all right whatever is feels comfortable for you you can always switch if it doesn't feel comfortable all right you guys are getting very good at counting beans and fingers we're going to play a game called show me beans i'll say a number and you put that many beans on the tops of the fingernails and don't skip any fingers so if i say show me one i don't want you to just be like okay one bean right here we want to go in order and this is good practice when we eventually start to put things in 10 frames and five frames so we want to start with the pinky always okay all right you ready show me two beans one two i hope excuse me i hope you did it too all right show me three one two Three, nice. And remember, if you are thinking, <laughs> wait, wait, I don't know if I got three, go back and check. One, two, three, got it. Show me two. One, two, good work. Show me four, we've never done four before, here we go. One, two, three, four. Nice work. Show me. Three. Let's say it in Espanol. Uno. Dos. Trace. Nice. Last one. Show me. Four. Ready? Uno. Dos. Trace. Cuatro. One, two, three, four. Good work. You guys are so good at showing me beans. All right, now you can put your beans away. Let's get out our fist and we're gonna count all the way up to five and then back again. And remember, when we count, we start with our pinky by putting it up. There's a little bit of a different way to count. Instead of going one, two, three, four, we're gonna start like a math wave, like a wave, okay? Here we go, ready? One, two, three, four, 
Five. Good. Do it with me, okay? Now let's count down and put all our fingers back to a fist. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. One more time. Faster. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Good. Now count down. Five, four, three, two, one. One. Nice. You guys are so good at that. Okay, now here is where you will want to get out what you're drawing with today and what you're drawing on. And I'd like you to draw two circles that are the same but a different color. Can you do that? And if you only have one color, maybe draw two circles that are the same, but a different size. Okay? All right, I'm going to give you five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, can you show me? Nice! Two circles that are the same, but a different color or a different size. Awesome! Okay, here we're going to go into our concept development now. Step number three. Look at the pictures below. How are they the same? How are they different? We've been working on these things are exactly the same. These things are the same, but so how are these the same? How are they different? Well, I see two circles that are both green and large. Those circles are exactly the same. I see these two purple circles are small. They look like they are exactly the same size and exactly the same color. Those circles are exactly the same. Let's look at this green one and the purple one. Well, these are both circles, but they're different because one is big and one is small. If I look at these two circles, they're both circles too, but one is gray and one is purple. So they're different. I hope that was similar to what you guys drew. Okay, now we're gonna work with a teddy bear. Let's have a teddy bear tea party. Look at the plate that teddy bear has. What do you see on his plate? It's striped. Yes, I personally love stripes. It's my favorite pattern. Teddy wants to have all of the striped plates for his tea party. He must be like me and only like striped plates. So let's give him just the stripes plate, the striped plates. <laughs> Would I give him this plate? This is how you say no in sign language. We use that a lot in our school. No, I wouldn't give him that plate because this is light blue and he only wants the stripes, the striped plates. So no, I'm not going to give him that plate. Would I give him this plate? No, that's gray. It's not striped. Would I give him this plate? This is how you say yes in sign language. Yes, I would give him this plate. That's striped just like this one. It's okay that it's smaller. He didn't say he wanted to have the same size plates. Teddy bear just said he wanted to have the striped plates. So this would work because it's a striped plate. Would you give him this plate? No, it's yellow. He wants stripes, not that one. Would you give him this plate? Yes, I would give him this plate. This is not exactly the same as this plate, but it's still striped. The stripes are just horizontal. That means they go across. These stripes are vertical and these stripes are vertical, but they're still stripes no matter if they're horizontal or vertical. So I would give him this plate too. Okay, let's see the next one. Now, let's have another teddy bear tea party. Teddy bear has this dotted plate. Look up close, you see how it has little tiny dots on it? Let's give teddy bear all of the dotted plates now. What do you think? I'm gonna grab a plate, you tell me yes, or you tell me no. This plate, this one, no, if you look close, that looks like dotted lines. I don't think he likes that one. This plate? No, that's checked. And you know what? I'm going to move this one back over because he doesn't want um, the 
dotted line plates. He wants the ones that just have little tiny dots. This one? No, look up that close. It's got those lines. That's not a good one. This one? No, not that one either because that has dotted lines too. Sorry, Teddy, you only get two plates. Those are the only dots we have. But he likes those ones. Okay, let's move on. Ooh, okay, so now we're gonna work on putting things together and why. I know that it would be, that it's easy for you guys to think of what two things go together, like a pair, but I want you to work on explaining the why. So how are these things right here used together? Tell your mom or dad or brother or sister or grandma or grandpa or babysitter, whoever is with you, tell them why these things are used together. These things are used together because we have a fork and a knife you and a plate. We eat with them. We eat with all of these things. We use our fork to poke things. We use our knife to cut things. We need our plate to poke and cut things on. So they are used together because we eat with them. Let's think about this one. What do you see here? Blurt, remember blurt means share the answer out loud. A pencil and a paper. Yes, I see a pencil and a paper. And hmm, think, 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 think. How are these two things used together? Hmm, I'm gonna say, teach. And when I say teach, I want you to tell the person next to you or, or just yell it out loud how these things are used together. Ready? Teach. All right, come back to me. These two things are used together because we use a pencil to write on the paper, just like you drew your circles on a few minutes ago, right? We write with pencil and paper. You got it. All right, now we can draw a line on here, but we can talk about it. So let's look at these objects. And we wanna match up the ones that have the same pattern. A pattern is like dots or stripes or checks or just a solid color, zigzags. A pattern is like something special that makes something look nice. So let's see, what has the same pattern as this teacup? Yeah, the plate down here. So those would go together. Let's see. What has the same pattern as these dots on the pants? Yes, the ones up there. You got it. Uh oh, I skipped one, didn't I? Let's look at the triangle. What has the same pattern as this triangle? Yeah, right across the circle. It's just solid red. Same. They're different shapes, but the same pattern. So we did those. And then what about this hat? It's like diagonal lines, but has the same pattern. Yeah, the other hat. These hats are not exactly the same, but they are the same pattern. And they also are the same size. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, let's talk about the object that would be used together with the object on the left. So here's the object on the left. What would you put inside this basketball net? This ball or this ball? Flirt. Yes, I would put this ball. This is called a basketball. I would put that basketball right inside that basketball net. Make a basket. Let's look at this bowl and a spoon and a pencil. What would you use with the bowl? The spoon or the pencil? Blurt. Yes, the spoon, you got it. Maybe you want some cereal or ice cream or oatmeal. Or hmm, what else could you use with a spoon, cottage cheese, anything. Now let's look at this paintbrush. Uh, um, this is paint and a toothbrush. What would you use with the paintbrush? The paint or the toothbrush? Blurt. Yeah, the paint. You got it. All right. Now let's think about what we learned. That's the student debrief, part number four of math. What are some ways we made a match today? Well, we made a match with the pencil and the paper. We made a match with 
Um, the, what else did we make a match with? You tell me. Oh yeah, we made a match with the basketball and the net. We made a lot of different matches. How can you tell if two items match? Well, you can tell if they have the same pattern, if they have the same color, if they have the same use. Like we knew that the paintbrush went with the paint because you need the paint and then you, you need the paintbrush to pick up the paint and put it on your paper, right? So we can tell they go together. They have the same purpose or the same use. Can you think of anything at home around your house right now that's used together? Hmm. I can think of my cup and some water that might be used together because I drink out of my cup and then with my water inside, right? Can you think of anything right now? I'm sure you could find something. What are some things at home that are not used together? Hmm, well, let's look right here on my desk. I have my cup again, and then I have my watch. I am not gonna put my watch in this cup of water. That would not be a good use, right? It would probably break it. <laughs> so those would not be used together. Can you think of something silly around where you are that you would not put together? I bet you can. All right, let's see what we have next. Okay, so now you are going to go to your Google Form exit ticket. And I will share that screen with you now to show you what you will get to do. So on your exit ticket, it says, look at the following picture and talk to someone at home about the two objects that would go together. Choose the correct sentence that tells about the picture. So let's look at these. We have sneakers, we have an egg, and we have some socks. So which sentence is true? The egg goes inside the shoe because it fits, or the socks go with the shoes. Choose which one is correct, and then hit submit. All right, kiddos, great job today. I will see you tomorrow for lesson four, and um, it will be another good one. Great job today with our fluency game, with our application problem. We did some sorting, we did some putting of matches together, some pairs, we talked about why they go together. Great work, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Adios.